As of this month, July of 2022, responsive search ads are now the only ad format that we can use for Google Ads search campaigns. Expanded text ads were retired on June 30th of this year. We can now only really turn them on and off, but we can't edit or create any new ones. Now with this change, I've seen a number of different tactics that people have. And to be quite honest, they kind of drive me nuts because usually people end up in one of two camps at the end of a very big spectrum. One, either they try and control every single component of the responsive search ad, effectively trying to create expanded text ads, or they go the opposite direction and they just think, well, Google's taking over, it doesn't matter anyway, and they throw some half thought out components into a responsive search ad format and just let it run. I personally think both of those are the wrong approach. What you should have is a more tactical strategy where you lean into Google's machine learning, but you make sure that you're actually strategizing and trying to control some aspects of the responsive search ads. So in this video, I'm going to give a couple examples of both ends of the spectrum. That way you can decide if maybe you fit into one of those camps. But then I'm gonna talk through the strategy and show you a template that I use for the accounts that I manage. So hopefully you can be on your way to better performing responsive search ads. The first thing I wanna do before we get into any of the strategies for responsive search ads is to give a tangible example of what I mean by those two extreme ends of the spectrum. So I'm in our Google Ads placeholder account and I'm already in a search campaign and I'm gonna come over here to create a new ad. I'm gonna click the blue plus button and then click responsive search ad. For this example, I'm gonna leave the final URL the same. I'm gonna skip over the display path, but you can see that there are already some headlines and some descriptions in the interface. So the first example I wanna give you of one of the ends of the spectrum is somebody who is being a control freak when it comes down to it. They're still holding on tight to the strategies that they learned from expanded text ads and maybe even text ads before that. And they're trying to make their responsive search ads as close to ETAs as they possibly can. To launch any ad on Google ads, you only need to have three headlines and two descriptions. That's because that's the minimum amount that you would need for an expanded text ad. So the control freak will run with only that setup. And the default that Google Ads has given me here, as I mentioned, with the three headlines, two descriptions down here, is exactly that. Sometimes, rather than leaving this up to Google to make different variants, as you can see off to the right, this preview, every time it refreshes, the headlines are in a different order, the descriptions are in a different spot. In some instances, the control freak will actually go a little bit further. And instead of letting Google decide which rotation they want these in, they'll actually come over here and pin everything into a specific spot. So the first headline will be pinned in position one, the second headline pinned in position two, the third one pinned in position three, and then scroll down and they can do the same thing with descriptions. They can show this in position one and only show in position two. So now what we've done is we've basically made it so that there is no dynamic capabilities within this responsive search ad because there are only three headlines and two descriptions and everything is pinned into a certain location. Just like with your expanded text ads, it does not mean that this headline three will always show and it does not mean that description two will show, but it means that every time this ad is eligible for the auction, you will have at least headline one and headline two and then description one in the spots that we have. And as you can see over here off to the right, the preview is no longer changing, but it is still counting between the variants. There just are no variants for it to show. So rather than showing a number of different versions with different headlines and different orders, it's cycling through different options, but there just aren't any options because everything is pinned. Now, while this might feel like a good use of responsive search ads to get you close back to where expanded text ads were with the control that you had, this really ends up being pretty short-sighted because although we might not like to admit it, Google does have a lot of machine learning behind the scenes that we advertisers simply don't know enough about. We can't have any insight into it. And even if I might think from time to time that Google overstates the intelligence that it has behind a user's intent. It still has more than we would know in any given scenario. So locking our ad copy in this specifically with this type of ad format isn't leveraging some of the machine learning that we can use from the Google platform. So that's one type of advertiser, the control freak. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum is the person who is just throwing 
anything they possibly can in a responsive search ad and has no strategy toward it. So let me clear all of this out. I'm gonna put in a number of different headlines and descriptions, and I'll show you what it looks like when there is just no strategy involved and no control being leveraged whatsoever. Now I've added in nine different headlines and I've filled out the four separate descriptions. You can see here that none of these are pinned and there are a number of different types of headlines that I've used. For this example, I'm only really gonna look at the headlines because the descriptions are a little bit longer, harder to convey the point. But somebody who advertises like this that doesn't have any strategy behind it will usually have a larger number of headlines, which I'm not opposed to nine. If anything, I usually put in 12 to 15 headlines myself but you'll notice that none of them are pinned and some of them can end up being really close to each other. Right here, we've got paid media pros and then down here there's paid media pros on YouTube. So hypothetically, we could end up having headlines that end up repeating that. And actually, I just noticed that the preview off to the side is actually capturing two of the different calls to action, subscribe on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. So you can see here that a potential variant of this responsive search ad is paid media pros, subscribe to the channel and subscribe on YouTube. It could show up like that, which is not really beneficial to the user. You don't need both calls to action in headline two and headline three. This is redundant messaging, but it is useful to let Google choose between subscribe on YouTube versus subscribe to the channel and see which one works best. This is where that machine learning can be useful in trying to make some slight tweaks based on user preferences that we advertisers just won't know the difference between. I personally don't care about the difference in the language of subscribe on YouTube versus subscribe to the channel, but Google might have some insight that a certain user does prefer one set of language over the other and can dynamically show that to any given user. So you've seen the highly controlled version of responsive search ads. You've also seen what can happen when you don't put any strategy and thinking behind your responsive search ads. So now, rather than spending the rest of the time in Google Ads, I wanna spend a good amount of time in a Google Sheet and show you the overview of the strategy that I employ in the accounts that I manage. Just like with the last example where there's no control really, I'm gonna focus only on the headlines for this strategy, but just know that the descriptions are going to be effectively the same process, just slightly different text that you end up coming up with. Over the past decade plus that I've been running ads on Google Ads, even when it was called AdWords, I always latched onto the idea that each headline or each ad copy or each ad variant needed to lean in specifically to one of a number of different categories of messaging to convey your brand to other people. The list that I'm gonna talk about today certainly is not extensive, but this will give you an idea of what I mean when it comes to categories. The first is brand. Think about this as when you put in your brand name into one of your headlines. In the example I showed just a little bit ago, that's where it said paid media pros. That's our brand name. That's what we would put as a headline. The second one is gonna be keywords. If somebody typed in paid media videos, then we can put in our headlines, PPC videos on YouTube, something like that. Keywords are where you're trying to reflect what the user typed in to let them know you're in the right spot. Third is call to action. It's always important to make sure you include a call to action in your ad copy. And I've always felt that at least one headline and at least half of your descriptions for responsive search ads need to have some sort of call to action in them to make sure the user knows what's expected of them on the landing page and what they're walking into. The next two are gonna be two different ways of explaining the value you can provide. So the first is gonna be benefits. For our videos, the benefit is that we tell you how to use the strategies in the platform so you don't have to learn it yourself. You make less mistakes, you can probably learn quicker, and you're learning from a set of professionals. Next is features. Features are different than benefits because features are effectively descriptors. The benefit of paid media pros is that you learn more, but a feature would be that we have new videos that come out every week. And then the last one I'll use for this is gonna be social proof. Think about this as star ratings, as different reviews people have given. In our example, I'm gonna use the subscriber count. So the first thing I do is map out all of these different groups that I think is appropriate for each brand that I work with. Sometimes some are not appropriate. Social proof might not fit for everybody, but there could probably be another category that takes that place. Again, this is not an exhaustive list, so think about what works for you. Now I'm gonna jump ahead and fill in a bunch of different headlines for each of these groups. Now each of these different categories has three different headlines to support it. 
Some, like the brand and keywords, are pretty similar to each other. They're only slight variations. Whereas other groups, like the features and the calls to action, are a bit different. The messages aren't just a slight tweak. Within the features, we talk about the number of videos, videos coming out each week, the types of channels that we put videos together for. There's a lot of variance within that group. So now that we have the headline examples that we can use, we need to start to figure out how to utilize these in a responsive search ad, especially considering that some of these are slight variations on each other. So rather than just adding all of these into a responsive search ad and letting it run, we need to take one more step and come up with ad templates to utilize. So let me show you what those look like. Here are three examples I came up with really quickly. In template one, we wanna use brand messages in headline one, social proof messages in headline two, and we wanna use calls to action in headline three. Template two goes keyword, call to action, features. Template three is benefits, brand, call to action. There's no right or wrong version of this. And if anything, the templates are effectively what you're testing more so than the individual headlines within each of them. That could be a different stage later on. You could get a lot more granular, but for the sake of this video and this strategy overview, what we're really testing are the templates more so than anything else. So let's say for this video, we wanna use template one in our ad creative. I'm gonna go back and forth between this sheet and the Google Ads interface and show you how I would set up this template one for a responsive search ad for paid media pros. I've cleared everything out and now Google's mad at me, but in our template one, headline one is intended to be brand messaging. So we have three different variants of brand messaging. So let me carry those over real quick. And since we want to keep brand messaging only in headline one to follow this template, because as you can see over here, the ad preview is showing all of our brand messages in the same preview, and that's not what we want. So to keep brand messaging in headline one, we need to pin them all in headline one. Now you can see that on the preview, it only shows paid media pros in headline one, but headline two and headline three are blank. So are description one and two, but I think that's a little bit of a glitch. But the headlines are blank because we only have messaging pinned in headline one and nothing is associated with headline two and three or nothing is unpinned. A common question we get is, can you pin multiple different headlines in the same position? The answer is yes. Effectively, what you're doing is telling Google, you can rotate and use your machine learning between these three ad messages in headline one, but nothing else can show up in headline one. And we only want these to be in that position. We don't want these to show up in any position other than headline one. So you're still leveraging Google's machine learning, but in a much more focused way. Now to continue setting up template one, I need to go grab the next set of messaging that I wanna put in headline two, which is gonna be social proof. So I'll get those set up and then I'll also set up the call to action, which is headline three. I tried to scroll so you can see all of them on this screen, but now I have all three brain messages pinned to headline one, all three of our social proof pinned to headline two, and all three of our calls to action pinned in headline three. So any of the ad examples that rotate in the ad preview are going to have the different variants, but in their assigned locations so that our ad messaging will read brand message in headline one, social proof in headline two, and call to action in headline three, even if we don't know which headline one, two, or three based on the ones we've provided is gonna show up in any given circumstance. As I mentioned, with this strategy, the next step would be to do something along the same lines as descriptions. Maybe you operate with the template that has brand social proof call to action, and then you also have descriptions lines one and two down here as part of that template. You could reiterate some of the same messages here, just expanded in the descriptions, or you could start to take some messaging from other groups and add those in and be able to fill out a little bit more robust picture of your brand. No matter which strategy you go with, you can then save this ad once you're finished with it. And now we have two different ad variants in this ad group. Since responsive search ads end up using a number of different dynamic capabilities, it can be hard to know at a glance which one is which. So when I put together my ad testing strategy, I lean into the template guide that we have and I use labels to name things with the template that I used. If you've watched a number of videos that I've put together on this channel, you know that I'm a stickler for naming convention. And this is an example of when I'm doing a very poor job. Template one is not a good naming convention, but I've talked about it the entire video as template one, so I'm gonna continue that example here. So the way that I would name these different ad variants would be as follows. I would check the box next to the new one. I would add a label, create a new one, 
and then I'll give it the name of add template one. Since labels can be applied at all different levels within the account, I usually put some sort of indicator, whether it's an ad, keyword, ad group, campaign, just so I know what I'm looking at when I'm looking at all the labels together. So this new one is gonna be template one and then click apply to add it. Then for the original ad, I would also create a label that was probably just gonna be called original ad. Again, this is a terrible example of naming convention, but you get the gist of it. So I'm gonna create and apply it. And now I'm gonna adjust my columns so I can see my labels. Under attributes, label is already selected, great. So I'm just gonna move it to a place that we can see it just a little bit better. And then click apply. But now with the labels added, you can see the performance of each ad within the ad group. But if you have the same ads or similar messaging or similar templates utilized across multiple different ad groups or campaigns, you can use the same label and you can use a higher report to determine performance. You can come up here into reports, go to predefined dimensions, the labels report for the ad level. And now you can see, even though they don't have any performance, we can see the ad original versus ad template one. And this will roll up all of the performance across all ads, whether they're in the same or different ad groups that have the label. So this is great for aggregate ad copy testing, even if your campaigns or ad groups are advertising different things, you could still determine which ad template performs best for your account and be able to utilize that moving forward. I want to end on this screen just so you can take another look at the type of template work that I would put together for any account. Overall, the strategy is not too terribly difficult. If anything, I find it a lot easier to come up with three or four different brand, keyword, call to action, headlines, all this stuff. If I know the categories that I'm trying to test and then typically depending on what I come up with at this first stage here, that's how I decide what templates I think will make the most sense. I might think that some of the headlines in this brand group would go really well with some of the benefits, but maybe not as much with some of the social proof for some reason. So I might craft a template to kind of keep those messages apart from each other just a bit. But it all depends on the companies you're working with, the products or services that you're advertising, and how that ad should flow from start to finish for the user. Hopefully this has given you a little bit more of a framework to use when putting together responsive search ads. So you're not trying to keep everything way too tight, like we used to have with expanded text ads. And you're also not just throwing your hands up in frustration and putting a bunch of stuff in there that doesn't make any sense. We can absolutely still retain a lot of strategy with responsive search ads while also leaning into some of the machine learning that can help us get incremental performance out of our Google ads, responsive search ads. Just like with anything else, if you have any questions about this responsive search ad template or strategy or anything else pertaining to the responsive search ad switchover, we would love to hear about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.